So flattening our tee boxes uh, is one of the easiest terrain manipulation things that we have to do inside of Unity. So this is a good one to start out with. And we're going to do this using the native Unity tools. Um, you can do this using RAM. However, uh, because this is we're flattening, flattening is really easy to do inside just using the Unity brushes. Um, so I'm going to serve this as not only a tutorial on flattening tee boxes, but also just a tutorial on covering the, the RAM brushes in general. So first thing that we want to do is, well, is open up Unity, not Inkscape. And I've got this tee box here, and you can see that this tee box from our terrain data, it does go up here, right? However, this side kind of slopes down, and that could be because we didn't put this in the exact right spot. Um, and same thing with this one, it doesn't look, looks like it's sloping down away and we wanna flatten it out. But let's work on this one first. So let me just move in a little bit and up. And if you, again, remember, uh, right mouse button, W moves forward, S moves back, D to the side, A to the left, E is like elevator up, Q is elevator down. Um, so once we have our inner terrain highlighted, because that's what we're going to be manipulating, we're going to go over here and we're going to go to these tools in the uh, inspector panel. And we have this, we can raise and lower the terrain. We never want to touch this, okay? This is going to raise the entire terrain or lower the entire terrain. So don't touch this. Um, and this is going to paint height, um, so we can, uh, and, and, our, and all the settings for that are down here, and we're gonna come back for a second. This is our smooth brush, which will smooth like sharp edges. Um, and those are really the only three things you need to know for Unity, and that's why I said it's crude. We don't have a lot to work with. Um, what, what we do have in all these, we have our different types of brushes. So this is what we call a hard brush. You can see it's a perfect circle. So when we draw with this, and I'm just going to kind of, I'll show you here what these look like in a second. But when I draw with this, it's gonna have a hard edge. Where this one over here is going to have a blurry edge, which means it's gonna not, it's gonna slope a little bit more. And I, my only recommendation would be when you first start with this is back up your terrain and just play and have fun and go through all these brushes and figure out what they do, change with the size, change with the opacity. I'll give you an idea <clears throat> as I show you this, what I'm doing, but um, ultimately experience is best with this. Um, so let's go back to this uh, paint height tool because this is ultimately where we want to work. And I want to flatten this out. So the first thing I need to do is, and I see is my brush is way too Big. It's, I really want it smaller than the tee box so I can kind of flatten out a very precise area. So first of all, let me lower my brush size a little bit. So that's a little bit better. Let me lower this down to about 33, and that's pretty good. I also, I don't want this hard brush. I want more of like a soft brush. And you can see when I do that, the brush gets a little bit smaller, okay? Um, and the opacity is, or is, is the strength of the brush. So when I click and I use it, it's gonna be how quickly it raises or lowers the terrain. And let's just start with it, maybe a little bit lower than halfway. And then we have our height. So our height is relative to what we call zero on our course. So this is saying I'm currently at 20. Now, what I wanna do is I'm gonna flatten this tee box. So if I hold down shift, okay, and then I click, you can see how that changed to 21.42. It changes to whatever height I am putting my mouse on. So if I put it over here and I shift and click, now it's 18. So if I were to brush right now and hold down my left mouse button, it's going to brush at a height of 18. But I wanna flatten this. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna click right in the middle of where I think the most average height is for my tee box. Shift, click, so now I'm at 21. And now if I gently move around here, you can see that it's raising my tee box everywhere to the same height. And I'm gonna push this out gently over here, and I'm gonna go over here 
And you can see over here, it's actually lowering it because it's too high. And I'm gonna go over the back. And now let me just move in a little bit and go up. Now what I don't wanna do is I wanna avoid messing up my cart path. And this is gonna be tricky here because I'm gonna have this corner that's right next to my cart path. So now you can see, you can pretty much see the area that I changed in my, and let me just make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see it. You can see the area that I manipulated and now this is perfectly flat. However, what did I do here? Well, now I got these weird ridges here. This looks pretty good. And we knew that that shelf was out here before. So that's not too bad, that's expected. And I expect to have this shelf because that's the way it is in real life. There's actually a retaining wall here. But this stuff back here does not look good. So now what I can do is I can go to my smooth height brush and let me just make this even softer and take my brush size and I'm gonna make it just a tad bigger and my opacity, I'm gonna bring it again about 50% and you're gonna have to play with these and get used to them. But now if you can see, if I go back to this edge and I go over it, it smooths it out. So it's much more gradual. Now, I'm gonna do it a little bit here, but I'm gonna leave it as a hard edge here because I do know that this is kind of like a retaining wall in real life and I might wanna manipulate that. But I got this little spot right here that looks like it's, I'll give you a different angle here. It doesn't drop off like I would like. So what I can do now, if I come over here, let me go back to my paint height and do a sample. So I'm gonna do a shift, and now I'm at 19. Go to a, I'm gonna to go to a hard brush. I'm gonna make my brush smaller, even smaller than that. And what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna to try to make this more of a, a very steep drop off. And you can see when I do that, kind of what happens here is that I've just made that pretty darn steep and it matches some of the other stuff, right? But again, now I've got this crude, ugly area here with these sharp edges, which I really don't like. If I move this around, again, I can get this nice and very slowly, but I got this stuff here now. Well, I'm gonna go back to my smooth. I'm gonna soften the brush a little bit, make it a little bit bigger, and I can come back. And I gotta make sure that I don't get too close to here because I don't wanna smooth this out. But I go there, and again, I've been doing this for a while, so I'm used to it. And now you can see, yeah, that looks pretty good. I mean, you can still see a little bit, depending on how the shadows are. And I could smooth this out a little bit more. But you can see how that is. But now this tee box, look how flat that is. All right, looks much better. We still have some work to do on our car pass. We'll come back to that. Let's do this one, though. This one's really, boy, we got some work to do here because it is really sloped down. So what we wanna do is we probably wanna build this whole thing up. So we can either start here and cut into the wall or we can start up here and make this into a ridge. So let's, let's cut in so you get an opposite effect of what happened up here. So what I'm gonna do is do my paint height again. I'm gonna sample it here. So now I have 17. Right? I'm gonna sample even a little bit lower here, right about there. So I got 17.29. Um, I'm going to go to this brush. Let's look at the size of this. I think I need to have it a little bit smaller. Let me move around a little bit smaller here. And now I'm going to come back. And you can see as I dig into the back, now I have a wall in the back of the tee box, right? and it's flat. So now we have a nice flat tee box here and I'm gonna go a little bit around the perimeter. Right, I like that. And now I'm gonna go back to my smooth brush, I'm gonna make this really soft and I'm gonna go back around these edges and smooth those out so they're not such a hard edge. And now you can see 
that my tee box here is nice and flat. All right, and it's and it's worked. It's blended well into around the 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 area here. Up here, you can see. Yes, if I go down, look how flat that is. Okay, that's the way we want a nice looking tee box to be. And you can see again, this is the one that we forgot about up here. Not going to worry about that for the sake of the tutorial and wasting your time and mine. But we got the idea here. Flatten these out. Um, so those are the tee boxes for hole two. Um, here they are for hole one. Same idea here. Um, I can either build this one up or flatten it. I think I would probably end up flattening that out. So if I come back in here, paint height, do shift, sample, you can see this one's now at 23. Raise this up a little bit. I'm going to do a fairly flat brush. Uh, look at this opacity of this. I'm going to keep it right at 48. Brush size 21. That looks pretty good. And now you can see what happens is I'm just going to flatten this guy out. I'm getting some ridges over there by this road. Not sure if I'll keep the road in the real when I build the course or not. Now you can see that I'm flattening this T box out. If I zoom back in here, you can see. It's nice and flat now. And now I want to smooth this out. So let's go to my smooth, make it a nice soft brush. And I can come back over this stuff. Let me soften those out a little bit. Soften this up a little bit. And go around here. Now, when I move around, nice and flat. And one last tee box here. This one looks pretty flat already, but I do them all anyway, because later on when you put your uh, tee markers on here and you want to do custom ones, if it's not flat, you can run into problems. So let's do paint height again. Shift to sample the height. You can see I'm at 21.45. Uh, let's do like a semi-soft brush here. If I just go over here. Flatten that out just a tad. Yeah, it's pretty flat already. Let me go and let me, so I can look around this other side. Oop. What happened here? Oh, I unclicked against my terrain. So let me go back, paint height. And now you can see that starts to build up. And now you can see that that semi rough that we had drawn inside Inkscape. We can see it now, and it's looking nice and flat, but we have this hard, hard edge here, which actually is okay. I think that's going to be okay for my purposes because I'm probably going to, uh, an advanced topic, which I probably won't cover, is how to put retaining walls on here. But I'm going to leave that go, I think. Oh, well, maybe I'll just show you guys how to soften that up. So smooth height. I'm going to change that opacity down really low so it's a really weak smooth. So I'm smoothing that. And you can see because my opacity is so low, it's very gentle. And I'm just kind of dulling that corner so it's not quite as rigid. So that's a low opacity brush. The strength is low. It doesn't impact it that much. Now if I come down here and let's look at it from this direction. Ah, I love that. Right? Nice and flat. It's going to be beautiful, all right? Both tee boxes looking nice and flat. Um, one thing I'm going to show you guys while I'm here, because it's see this clipping that I'm getting as I move down here, and that starts the terrain starts to disappear. It's called clipping. It's a Unity bug. Um, to get rid of that, you can take a thing called what I do is take a human height person. See, so you have it here. And I just drag it onto my scene. And with him highlighted, I hit F. And now you'll see when I zoom in really close, I don't get that clipping anymore. So quick tip. So one thing um, I want to make sure we cover is we just made a bunch of changes to our terrain and changes that we probably want to keep, right? So what do we do? Yes, create terrain backup. Oh, I happen 
oh, it's because I don't have my terrain selected. Close this, select enter because that's what I'm backing up, terrain backup, create terrain backup. Now, instead of calling it baseline, I'm gonna call it T boxes complete because that was what I just did, right? And I'm gonna create a backup. Get in the habit of creating train backups. It'll save you.